You guys feel the energy? Yes. How many agree with me that energy is important? Say yes or no. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. Without energy, we can't get our clients to sign a contract. And we have to all find a way to put it in my back. Okay, it's behind me now. Okay. And clip it, but I can't because they're going to be easy. So I thought we had a microphone, but we have a microphone. Turn it down a little bit. Me? Come here. Andrew, we need you. Can you ask Andrew a round of applause? He's up. Okay. That's why it's going that. Okay. Yeah. 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 So go ahead and turn it. Okay. Hello. There we go. There we go. Okay. There we go. Another round of applause. Thank you, Andrew. First of all, I just want to tell you guys thanks for some of you came a long way. We even have some agents here that are not even with Keller Williams yet. So we want to say hello to our reserve table. Say hello to our reserve table. Hello. We're so glad you got here in the room today. And hopefully we got questions for these agents because this is not just about us, it's about you. You are Keller Williams agents and we appreciate you so much more than you'll ever know. God, family, then business, and in that order. And you guys really make a difference in this market center. And I want to thank you for coming to this market center. This is KW Clearwater. I've been here only 60 days. And man, look at this, I'm excited. Give me a round of applause. <laughs> Amazing to, my, to the amazing staff we have. Let's give uh, first of all Mike a round of applause. He's the office of Mike has always done an amazing job, and also to the amazing Kevin. Don't you love Kevin? Yeah. 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 It would not be possible to have this kind of synergy and this kind of energy without uh, Kevin making it possible for us. All right, so I've got some questions that I'm going to be asking these agents. And so sit back now. It's time to really get down to business and find out what they're doing. And you've seen their volume. You know what they do. Uh, but I'm going to ask these questions. I guess who wrote these questions for me? Nikki, you won't be. I think Nikki might even be on the Zoom, but I'm not sure yet. She may be traveling. So I'm going to go through these questions very carefully. I'm going to take and uh, give the microphone to each one of the panelists as they begin to talk about their business and what they do. But please do me a favor. Prepare to ask questions. Think about what you want to ask them. Think about your business and what you'd like to know. Because they've been through it all. I mean, they've gone through the lead generation. They've gone through working with clients, losing deals, finding deals. Are we in a trying market? Yes or no? Yes. Are we in a trying market? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, that's why we all should go to shift because that's the time to really learn about the market. So I'm going to start with one question that I'm going to ask. These are actually my questions, the first ones, but the other ones are the case. And uh, But I'm going to start off by asking each one of the panelists to tell us a little bit about these questions I had here first. So I'm going to hand you the microphone, start with you, Tulio. All right. Give Tulio another round of applause. We clap a lot here. First question I'm going to ask Tulio is, how many years in the business? 25 years. 25 years, okay. Wow. How big is your team? There's five of us, so it's really four and a half. My mother-in-law, she, she's a part-timer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so i got to help our family, right? Yep. All right. And, um, and how much business did you do in 2021? We did 47 billion. 47 million. Woo! Woo! And last but not least, how much business so far this year? 30 million, 200. 30 million. Wow, give him another round of applause. Thank you. We've already at 30 million. Does that tell you something? Yes or no? Yeah. yeah. All right. The amazing Jody Avery. We're so happy she's in our office, man. You guys get to see Jody just coming in and out and doing her thing. I got her to come to the meeting. <laughs> yes. And I only got her here because my puppy's here. He's around here somewhere. So tell she's somewhere around here. He might be still sitting on the table. <laughs> I'll go get him in a minute. Okay. So, Jody. <laughs> So how many years in the business, Jody? Um, I've actually been a licensed real estate agent for 22 years, but I've actually started real estate in 2011. 2011, okay, great. How big is your team? Right now it's three brand new agents and one supporting staff. Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, how much business did you do in 2021? I think he's at 47. I think I'm 47.1. Yep, she put it. All right. And then that's right. Can you guys tell him, right? Um, and so far this year, how many years? Uh, 
How are you, how, how are you this far? This, this I really don't know. Okay. So I'm going to check and um, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give Judy a round of applause. Thank you, Judy. Mr. Jack Smith, so how many years in the business? Uh, six years and two months. Wow. Oh, here you keep on clapping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jack, um, how big is your team? It's actually six of us. Six of you? And one, one director of operations. Okay, is any of your team here in the room today? My partner, Divya. Divya, wave. Hello, Divya. How are you? Good to see you, Divya. Uh, how much business did you do in 2021? Well, I told you 43 million, but we actually did 41 million. Okay, well, he's got to get that by the end of next this week. Okay, so there you go. let's get Jack a round of applause, too. Hang on. How much have you done so far this year? A little over 31 million. A little over 31 million. Wow. Let's get to you, Baldini, questions. Okay, so here's the first question. So it's going to go to you, actually. Can I kind of start with you, with the lady? With you? Oh, no, you too? Okay. I'm going to give it to you then. You ready? Okay. So, Julia, here we go. So what challenges are you seeing in the market today? What challenges are you seeing in the market today? You know, I think the biggest one is where I come from, which is called the Springs, Colorado. Um, days on market are definitely starting to expand. It was listed on a Thursday night or go live on a Friday morning and guaranteed contracts by Monday, usually by Sunday. And the sellers were saying, can we stop? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's not happening anymore. And what's it, it's like anything, it's communication, communicating to your clients and painting a true picture of what the market's doing now. And um, fortunately, you know, with all the, the good coaching that we have and, and listening to James Shaw, we knew this was coming. So my team got prepared for it and practiced what we were going to say to people and, and prepped them for a longer wait and told them, hey, when you hear your friends at the water cooler in the break room talking to you about how their house sold for 15, 20, 30, 50,000 over, those days are over. Okay. And where I come from right now, if you have an offer or two by Sunday or Monday, that's a blessing. You know, we're, we're at 11 days on market now. And that felt like it happened overnight. Mm -hmm. So it really is something that we need to make sure our people know what it's looking like. And, and that's an average. There could be 16 or 18. The beauty of that now is that my clients are coming back and we're not worried because he told us. We'll get it to Leo. You, you prepped us for this. You know, so that's that's one of the biggest things. So does any one of the other panelists have any, any, um, any feedback on that? Would you like to say something about that? So what, what changes are you seeing in the market today? How about you, Jack? I mean, I think the most important thing is that Julia spoke about uh, James Preptus. If you're not on the pivot ship call in the morning or early bird speaking, uh, talking real estate or with, Jim, with um, Chris Hurley with script practice, uh, I can only tell you that in the past few years has changed your life because of that. And they have been prepping us for this. Um, I didn't really want to own it, um, but we have seen it happen. We have one particular listing that we do not know why it's selling. It's stunning. It's it's just not selling. So the days of the market is definitely lasting. I have to say we're shocked. We put a house on the market here in Palm Harbor over the weekend, and we only had three offers. And for the first time ever, every offer came in at asking price. Wow. wow. We had some escalation clauses, but all three offers, which just never happened. Of course, the homeowner said, "Well, what did you tell them?" I said, "I didn't tell them anything. I just said I wanted a seven, and I got a six. Right? That's awesome. Very nice. Something else I can answer. Yes. And then something else that I, we're going to go back to pivot all the time with these people up here, just so you guys know, if you're not on pivot, you got to be on pivot shift in the mornings. So, but um, pricing, pricing's got to be dialed in. It's got to be accurate. You know, you've got to know your numbers, know what's going on and prep your clients for it. I've already had two price reductions. I haven't had a price reduction in years. I've had two in the last week. And and the younger agents on my team are like, what's going on? Is the sky falling? I'm like, oh. <laughs> you, you just need to be ready for these talks. But but how to be ready for these talks is the other thing. You know, I mean, I'm going back to writing it into my listing agreements, where if it doesn't sell by day seven, we're taking it down by five, 10K, whatever that price point warrants. And then if another week goes, we have another incremental, whatever it is for that price point, price reduction built in. That makes that conversation a lot easier than you going back to them going, okay, I'm, I'm calling again, asking for another 
10k off this week that's that's that that never feels good as the listing agent to have to make that phone call but when it's already built in it goes away it makes it a lot easier to just make the call and say so we're dropping it as the as the listing agreement states and then they go yep we know yep we're ready to go so that's that's the, the second way second thing i wanted to bring up for handling it and, and it just makes it much more mild that phone call I just want to add in Pinellas County, the average price reduction right now is $20,000 is the average. I think it's huge. It's not 5,000 or 10,000 here. It's the average is 20. So I just have a question. That's awesome. Good question. Anybody have any questions yeah. in the audience? Hey, how, how many of those price reductions do you put in the listing agreement? I mean, will you, will we, you know, or four? Huh? I've always built in two into mine at this point in time. And you do it every week? Yeah, every seven days. Okay. I try to hit it for the weekend. Yep. Yes. How do you determine the number? Is it relevant to the price? The yeah, listing price? It's, it's relevant to the is price. Is it a guesstimate or you go like the average is 20? Well, right now, I'd say it's a guesstimate. I haven't dialed it in. I've only had to do it twice Scary. in five years. I know, I'm out of practice. And yeah. there's not enough data to really say what, what right. works in right. these days. And we okay. are doing, we're the first to do it. So, but it, it's a field thing at the moment. Right. Jody, question for you. So what are you doing differently, if anything, in your business today than last year? Oh my gosh, I guess I hope you all have pen and paper. I am going to give you so many things that you can be doing and making a difference. So as you know me or you follow me on social media, social media is my biggest platform and where I get most of my leads. Um, so first of all, um, you always want to have be different and growing um, in social media of what you're posting. I know a lot of realtors are doing the same thing of posting, you know, here's your new listing, something under contract. That is what everyone is doing. So I'm going to encourage you to do something different and step out and make a difference. So on social media, I started something called um, Business of the Week. I used to have my A-list book, which has a whole bunch of businesses in it. But well, what I've done is because of the pandemic, a lot of the companies have gone out of business or switched positions. So every single Monday, it's called Business of the Week. I meet with that business. I take a picture with them and I post all about them. That immediately connect, creates a relationship between me and that business. And um, they are giving me business. I am promoting them. And every the, the key to it is, is not just taking a picture of them but actually being in the picture together with them. So they see me, we see them. Um, I just recently did a hauling company that hauls junk out of houses. And I went with him to the dump with his staff as they carried stuff and I was in there. So you wanna be creative in your social media. Um, another thing that I started doing is called Jody Avery Home. And every single Friday I do videos of an item, a unique item in my home. So I bring people into my house and I show one item a week. And so I kind of started this as a little bit of an influencer. I am not getting paid on the items, but I can tell you that my following has almost quadrupled. I'm having thousands and thousands of people seeing the item I promote on Fridays. Um, one of the things I've tried was called Woof Wednesday. <laughs> I have a blue Doberman and um, I started doing Woof Wednesday where I post a picture of my dog somewhere and I have everyone send in their pictures. So if you're a dog lover or if you have a passion about something, I encourage you to use your dog, your kids, anything to promote your business. And actually, um, yesterday I was featured in Real Producers Magazine with my dog, Zara. So that was kind of fun. The other thing I've done since new since last year is I kind of rebranded. So I changed logos. I uh, changed my business card. Um, I have a new website. And I also encourage each and every one of you to get new pictures. So I think some of us have, you know, recognition. I have new pictures taken twice a year. Um, you want to be always fresh, new, growing. So if you haven't updated your picture and you're still looking the same, the same business card, I suggest that you give it a rebrand and freshen it up. Um, since, since last year, um, I am now back to doing networking groups. So if you are not out there networking and being involved in the community, I'm gonna encourage you to do that. Um, 
I am back to doing one on one coffees. So that is a huge one for me. I actually set up 30 minute slots for about three hours, four hours. I don't drink coffee at every single one. <laughs> Otherwise, I need to go to the room. But um, I definitely say that I have a half an hour time slot. I'd love you to you know, meet with me. And the reason is, is to see other people's business, how you can grow and be an impact in their business. And they usually want to do the same back. Um, I also started dinners with my top client referral base. So I invite 10 people out to dinner. I send them a message and say, hey, can we get together? It allows me to connect others together. And I usually have a little gift for them at the table. And I kind of limit it between really six people and 10 people max, where everyone really can get to know each other and grow that. Um, the other thing is, is it's really important to be involved in the community and volunteering. So I'm sorry, I'm not sure why it's making that crazy sound. But if you're on my team, one of the requirements is you have to be involved in a nonprofit. So everyone has to have a nonprofit that they support, they go to the events, and then we actually support other team members, nonprofits. So it is important. Um, I was actually humanitarian of the year for the state, for all realtors. And if you don't realize the importance of giving back and making changes in the community, I just encourage you. So please see me in, in reference to doing that. So um, the other things I'm going to tell you that have changed since last year is being in relationship with people and your clients. And I know all of us do different kinds of things, but I'm going to encourage you to step out of the box. Some of the creative marketing, I love marketing, so this is like my specialty. But um, on every single holiday, I find a way of connecting with my clients. And um, for example, on in February, let's say St. Patrick's Day, I send them a lottery ticket that says, I'm so lucky to have you. And then I say, if you win, you have to buy a house with me. <laughs> and a lot of people write me back and will say, I won $5. I don't think it's enough. <laughs> but it's a way of asking for referrals, keeping in contact with them without you know, saying, hi, I'm a realtor. Do you know anyone interested in buying, selling, or investing? So you want to be creative. I also text on every single holiday for, let's say, Valentine's Day. I love having you as a client. I'm so appreciative of you. Um, and then I switch it up to Facebook messages. So sometimes I'll text the whole holiday, whether it's you know Easter. I'll text everybody, and then the next time I contact them, it will be through Facebook, or the next time I'll contact them will be through LinkedIn. So I use different methods and different means of contacting them, so they're not always hearing me through Facebook or through Instagram or whatever it may be. So those are just few marketing suggestions that I've really stepped it up because now we can interact with people. We now can hug people. We now can interact. So it's a whole different world now. So these are things that kind of stepped up and brought back into place. That's fantastic. Give a round of applause. Ma, what's good? Exactly. Back on the, uh, on what, uh, what you may be doing differently with your business than last year. Well, she just gave us a couple of other good ideas. Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Okay, good, thank you. So, so now I have another slide. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was sliding while I was sliding him up here today. So we had two, we had two I was taking notes for him. I was just <laughs> <laughs> uh, The one thing that Dibby and I do uh, is that we entertain in our homes. Dibby is an incredible cook, uh, chef, I should say, past cook. Uh, and I'll give you a little story here. So when the first time I met her, and she was just joining the team, uh, she invited me over. And I sat down and watched her for an hour and a half as we wrote the offer. And she prepared seven separate meals for two in her family. What? Now I just said, <laughs> <"Lord>, I <see."> <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. But that's what they do. They will be in a show home, and that's how they take care of the family. So I don't know why, but Philip and I, my husband and I, Philip, uh, have always entertained in our home. And we have people in our home all the time. Actually, we got a call on Sunday from a couple that wants to sell their condo that we bought. We sold their house and we bought their condo. Now they want to move to Mexico and said, Can we come to Derek's house and list our house? I'm like, okay, this is good. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, we never, I never asked for this. I always just say, How can I help you? How can I help your friends? But I never said, You know, you have something to buy, sell, and invest in real estate. Just find out we operate. I'm not comfortable with it, so I can't step out of it. You know, we're here to help you in any way we can. Um, we do a newsletter monthly. 
uh, Sylvia takes care of that. Sylvia is our director of operations. Um, we call it the St. Pietian because it's pet. <laughs> we also have a, a letter that goes out to um, our client base as well, as well as our referral partners. We're 99% referral. Actually, I'm seeing Drew in the back of the room, and he and his partner uh, sold a condo for Philip and I in New Jersey about three years ago, two years ago, three years ago. Um, and, we, and Divya actually sold Drew his home mm. when he was coming down. So um, our referral network is very, very strong. As Julia witnessed, I had a good call this morning and a bad call this morning. But the bad call was he decided to invest in something else that had nothing to do with us, um, which felt good when he said that. And I'm going to invest in something else that's going to uh, postpone my taxes. Uh, but then we got a call for, uh, for, for a listing on the web. So um, all of our work is really referral. We teach space with people all the time. I do a lot of pop buys. Um, uh, one of the things that we do do and has really helped boost our game is that. Jody knows we bought up, uh, we have these custom made chocolates in St. Pete um, from Coco Addiction. And there's about nine more boxes in here. And they're like 25 bucks a box, right? And we also take a dozen roses and chocolates to every single listing appointment, whether we get it or not. 99% of the time we get them. But yeah. not really. <laughs> Very good, huh? Oh, that's good. <laughs> so that's one of the things that we do. Um, and I'll give you a little example. Um, when Jake first, Jake and Jimmy and I first joined the team, we have a little pastry shop in town called um, Cassis. Cassis, thank you very much. I'm not really good with names, I'll give you a name. <laughs> and we went in and bought a box of pastries. And Jake is fresh out of college, right? Brilliant kid. He's a way old man trapped in a boy's body. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. And so is Silvio. He's an old man trapped in a boy's body. Um, so we went and bought this box, box of pastries. It was my box. He does a lot of cold calling. I hate cold calling. I just, I do it, but I have, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> um, but I really, really don't enjoy it, I have to be honest. Um, so we took the box of, of uh, pastries, and it took us, what, three or four appointments before we got the listing, because they were both commercial brokers and could have listed it themselves. But Jake is very charming, knows how to work the crowd. The, 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 the couple really, really liked him. I was just a tag along. And every time we went, we took pastries with us. So they became used to us showing up with pastries, right? So Jake has sold that house first for 1.3, two years later for 1.6, and we just sold it for 195 about six months ago. So he had a $15 box of pastries. We got those leads. So I think one of the things that we do, and I, I, we are going to incorporate some of your ideas, Jody, and I have a particular chat. Um, because those are brilliant. But having people in our home um, is really, really well. We also belong, belong. All of us go to the Pivot Ship Hall. We've been on it, I've been on it since the very beginning, Debbie and I have. Um, and Jane Shaw's wife has it, works in a store in Palm Harbor. It's a home of Safety Harbor. It's a safety, harbor. safety Harbor called Airy Lane, A E I R, right next to a uh, bar, I mean, a wine shop called Six. And they've all been on other Everybody knows what I'm talking about when I say that. Um, and then there's this golden cricket that everybody had to have last year. Like, I'm not a FOMO guy. <laughs> but I had gauge of FOMO where they didn't have a cricket. So, so now we take the cricket on every single listing appointment. So he is in, we call him Pip, he's in every one of our single appointments. And one of the things that one of somebody suggested the other day that was on the, on the call, or what, I make daily calls with people that are on the show all the time because of how I connect in our network, um, suggested that we um, start hiding the, the cricket in the house. And if they found it five times, we send them a lottery card. <laughs> <laughs> now this is not, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm good with ideas, but I'm not, I know how to make money. So, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I know how to make money. Um, but that was another thing that came up that we can do. So I think the more engaging we are with our clients, um, and more than we make them feel like family, um, it really, really works best. That's awesome. Let's give Jack a round of applause there, right? Well, Jack, remember about that golden cricket. <laughs> what he meant was hide it in the pictures that go yeah, with the house <laughs> so that people can find it when they're looking through your listing. And you can make a game out of it with all your past clients. And when they're going through the Matterport tour, if they find it five times, then they can fill out a Google sheet for a prize. Wow. So that gets people to look at all the pictures. So anyway, 
I just trust you, brother. That's right. <laughs> you trust me all the time. Uh, yes. Okay. So um, one of the things that, that I started doing, because I was doing it for my team anyway, was leading script and role play. And, I, and some people don't like the word script, because then they feel like they're scripted. But I really like to call it dialogue training more than anything, OK? Because it's, it's having dialogue. And it's fun because when you have new people on, they often say, oh, I'm, I've been talking to people forever. And what I find is they, they talk at people instead of listening to them. That's why I'm up here with my pen and taking notes on what these guys are saying when they're, when they're talking. I take notes, a lot of notes, and I look at people in the eye and I, I scribble down and then I ask questions. And that is what so many of my meetings are, is asking questions. It's not barraging them and telling my story. It's, it's truly listening to them and documenting. And then I'm able to come back around and engage with them effectively. And I document what their dog's name is. I document what their kids' names are and capture all that type of stuff. And then when you're back on the phone with them and the dog's barking, I can say, oh, Satoshi's behind you. <laughs> Cut it for me, you know, or say hi to your husband for me and address him by his name, those type things. But the scripting has become just vital for the team. And I recently expanded it and opened it up. It's called Word Wizards it's on Facebook and anybody can join it. And if you can't join it live because I'm two hours different from you, all our shows get posted, which is great because we can continue to learn. I listened to the Ellie and Lee show, uh, the early birds talking real estate. And uh, I'm, I'm a few months behind, but I listen to their stuff. I, I listen to Chris Hurley's show as well. And we all share information. And it, it's fun to hear people address the problems from different parts of the world, you know, to uh, my team comes back to me and just says how helpful it has been to be able to go into any situation and know the answer or know multiple answers on how to contend with things. So that's, that has been vital. Um, we do mandatory, mandatory lead gen on my team every day and we do it by Zoom. My team, we're not all together. We're in four different parts of, of the city and we're on Zoom together on mute. And everybody documents everything that they do. You got to talk to 25 people a day. And it has to be what happened on that call. Our admin gets the report every Thursday by 820. And I get the stats. And that way I know how to help my team when they're falling behind or, or if they're doing great, if they're on par. At the end of every day, we do something that, that James has taught us. We all text at 7 o'clock to each other how many calls we made, how many people we talked to, how many meetings we got. And that's it's an accountability thing. And it's not fun to put a zero. <laughs> and when you know you got to report that to everybody on your team, you get a one. And the one doesn't have to be a listing or a buyer. It can be coffee. It can be coffee. It can be going for a walk. It can be doing anything. You know, it, it just as long as you are doing something with someone that could lead to a deal. Okay. Um, then let's see. I, I film a weekly market update every Monday. I have my marketing assistant pull the stats for me, just about six local stats for my town. And she makes a background for me on Canva. It kind of looks like a little newsy thing, you know, and every, every week the picture behind me is different as well. I go on to Facebook. I practice it for about 20 seconds. I record it in one shot. I send it right back to her in Dropbox. And she posts it for me on all the Facebook pages and on YouTube. Boom, done. And that takes me about three minutes to do totally. It takes her about 10 minutes to produce on Canva, but it's a system and your clients see it. And what's cool is I'll be walking in the mall. I'll be walking at, in a, at one of my kids' basketball games. And sometimes a parent from the other team will grab my wrist and go, hey, we see you every Monday. We love that. We watch that. When we sell, we're selling with you. You know, that is cool. And it's easy to do when you streamline it. Um, I got very intentional. After Mega Camp last year, and when I saw a gentleman talking about videos, I have to do 100 videos this year, and now I'm probably going to end up with 150 videos this year. That has already led to three transactions from agents I've never met before, and two of them were Remax agents from other states that found me just online because I do a lot of videos. One of the ones, one of the, the forms that has worked really well at getting tremendous viewership is when it's a listing. I always start about a block away and I film about 10 houses driving slowly. Be careful while you're doing it. Make sure the street is clear and there's no kids, you know? And I do this with my iPhone. This is not like videographer following Tulio around. This is like an iPhone 8 or something in my hand, you know? I'm literally just filming the houses slowly, talking about the neighborhood, pulling up to the house. 
And for whatever reason, the algorithms go through the roof while you're driving and you're filming houses talking. Then I'd stand in front of the house, walk through the house, make them short, like about six minutes each, do a quick wrap up at the end. And I'm between four and 10,000 views on almost every one of them. So whatever, for whatever reason, slow driving and talking about the neighborhood, do a little wrap up, it works, all right? And then we do letters. We do 200 letters a week that go out and it's, I've got a buyer and I, that goes to my database and it has often a picture of the family. This is who they are. I don't care, we put their name in it sometimes. You know, this is a Navy family moving from here to here and this is what they need. And then we do the opposite for I got a seller for our database. And we send out a lot of letters and then we have an agent on my team who does follow up to every single one of them. Hey, did you get our letter? Might you know anybody? Who do you know? That could, that, that might be selling soon. And we stay in touch, stay in touch, stay in touch. I do four client appreciation events a year as well. Most of them are virtual. So and there's a connect live of Ellie McIntyre interviewing me on my virtual movie nights and virtual cooking classes and, and the stuff that I do online. In costume. In costume. In costume. <laughs> yeah, I was Bruno for Encanto and uh, I, I've been many Disney male characters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. All right, let's give Petulio a round of applause for that. Good job. Nice. Questions? Let's open up to some questions from you. So, who has a question? Can you go over here to uh, this Eric Jensen? I don't need that. I don't need that, but I'm bringing it anyway. <laughs> I was just curious on your video you just talked about. Do you delete that after it's sold? No, I'll well, leave it up forever. Yeah, that just stays on. That stays on, and people people see homes from three years ago. Then they they see you. They see you doing it. It may not even be about that house anymore. Sometimes they will, and they go, "Can you find me that house?" But now that they can see when it was filmed, it was dated. It might you know everything's dated on Facebook or whatever. Right. Yes. Where, where are you posting that? Yeah. It goes on my personal Facebook page, my business Facebook page, my team's Facebook page. Are YouTube, you sharing it? Or it goes YouTube? YouTube and we do a post for each one. We don't do a share to a share to a share. Right. The algorithms go down. You want them to go up. Awesome. So take your media and do a post, do a post, do a post, copy and paste the content on yeah, each right. one, your, right. your narrative, but you don't want to do a share to a share to a share because it starts to drop your, your viewership. So is it YouTube and then you're well, sharing that YouTube sure. on your Facebook? No, you don't want to go YouTube to Facebook because that'll drop your Facebook right. views. You want to film it so best way to do it is put Facebook Live if yeah. you can. Yeah. So I always do a Facebook Live and then I film it again. And then my recorded version gets posted to my other Facebook pages and that recording gets posted to YouTube. If I had all day, I'd go live to each one of them, but I don't. Do you, do you do Instagram, LinkedIn? I do not, not at this time. There will be someone soon helping me with getting all those, but doing it to the ones I do is about as much social as I can handle at this moment. How many transactions did you do last year, Julia? 125. Another question. Uh, two parts. The 25 people a day that they're calling, like your lead gen time, what's the time span that you guys, your team does? It's mandatory nine to 11. You can keep going if you have to. And then the 7 p.m. text, what were the three things that they report to you? Oh, we, we do how many hours? How many people? How many appointments? Do you have a limit price in your listing that you'll accept? No. So you'll take a fifty or a hundred thousand dollar listing? Oh yeah, we do. But not many of those existing Colorado Springs. <laughs> if they do, it's land. If, yeah. if they do, it's land, and we'll, we'll, do, we'll do land. I mean, we'll say no to stuff too if it's not in our wheelhouse. I have a question for Jody. Yeah, question for Jody. When you talk about um, Jody, every home that you do every week. You do that every week? I do it. I do it every single Friday. So what is that about? Mm. I just give different items that are unique. First of all, people like to be invited into your home. So they watch because they want to like see behind you. What do you mm -hmm. have? What does it look <laughs> yeah. like? So people are stalkers, just like we like to see other people's houses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they want to see my house and then they want to see the items and what I promote. So I try to pick very unique items. I like unique items. I like, you know, some things are really functional. Some things are really different. Um, and I just pick things that I love and it's all over the board. And that's what I love about it because there's not a set of what exactly it is. Mm -hmm. 
but I will actually teach you how to roll a towel, you know, for the beach, how to hang a towel. And then I will show you the towels that I like, <coughs> one that's monogrammed, one that's actually sewed in. So I'll talk about the item. So, and we link everything to Amazon. So everything, they can buy it, but I am not actually getting paid on any of the items. That might be something. And I knew how much video was from our last family reunion. And I said, I do not like the camera on me. So all of you who are thinking, I do not want to do this, but I figured I am just going to jump in and suck it up and, <laughs> and actually just go ahead and do it. And um, I'm getting better. And I'm using it as a way to practice and get better and more uncomfortable in front of the camera facing me. And um, it's been overwhelmingly successful. Um, I do happy dances, and I'm sure you all have seen them. <laughs> um, but those happy dances that I do get 50,000 views. I haven't seen it. Can you demonstrate? You saw it all the way up there. <laughs> so, what it is, is my happy dance is at closing, it's only three seconds of a boomerang and I just dance, I add the music to it later. The thing about it is that only goes to not only my site, my business page, my thing, it goes to their families and their families and their families. And um, we've actually, they've gone so viral. Um, Realtor picked it up. I mean, I had a lady with an oxygen mask on dancing with her oxygen tank. <laughs> you know, all the emojis and different things added. But those have been, I tried to stop the happy dance and it won't stop. Like, and people choreograph 30, you know, three seconds for me. Like I have to learn the Charleston <laughs> <laughs> because they want it. They coordinate their outfits. You know, I had one of uh, my clients dress as Elvis, completely to Elvis at closing. So um, people get really intense on these, and you, they are getting the views. And then we have a competition at the end of the year to see they get a weekend vacation on the beach to who's the best happy dance. And it does go, um, we use all social media, so it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Snapchat. And they go to all social media. And it's very easy to do. You just, like we said, you just take the video and you shoot it to every single site. Um, very helpful, very nice. Yeah, fine. It looks like there's, like, uh, I think, 36 questions online. Oh, my. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to those. Okay. want to make sure you guys get yours first. I have a question. Okay. What? Yes? Um, I want to. Well, who's the question to? Uh, Jack and Tulio. Jack Tulio. and Tulio. Okay. So what was your motivation in the beginning when you started as far as, like, your legion? Like, what motivated you? Because sometimes, you know, in the beginning, we have, like, reluctance to, you know, make the phone call. So what was your, like, drive to actually get on the phone? I have to say that my real motivation was I moved here and I didn't know a soul. Um, I lived in New Jersey and. Um, <laughs> I think you're good. Uh, we got wiped out to Sandy. So I had to relive my life, redo our life. Our house was wiped out, our restaurant was wiped out, our bed and breakfast was wiped out. And while it, at the time it felt awful, it still hits me all the time. Um, I knew in the end. That it would really, really be fine. Um, we live in Manhattan as well, and I remember walking to Washington Square, and at the same time, I got diagnosed with poor cancer. So you know, you get all these things thrown at you. You say, "How are you going to go through this? Let's just get through it." And I walked walked through Washington Square, and I swear to God, I did this. I looked at him and said, "Okay, God, you've given me crap for two and a half years. Move on to somebody else." <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> so I came down, didn't know a soul. Um, I bought a. a an apartment and I called the old folks home, an over 55 uh, <laughs> apartment. Um, my neighbor in Fort Lauderdale suggested coming over here because he had to haunt the house there. And I did not, I knew it was never going to be home. And I knew I did not want to live in New Jersey for the rest of my life. I mean, I loved it. We lived right in the ocean. It was gorgeous. I actually loved it. But I just knew I was done. And in 30 years, I was done. So when I came down here, if you asked me to be at the golf park, I went to the golf park. If you wanted to go to the grocery store, I went to the grocery store. I was telling Tuli on the way, on the way up here that uh, I got sober 41 years ago. And when I got sober, when I got sober, I had to change my whole world and my whole life and all the people in there. So I started doing things as if I got sober again. And that's really what sort of changed. So my first group, I was telling you, the first group I joined was a square dancing group. That's that in Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. I know this guy, this white guy can dance. <laughs> 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 
take that some people, you know. I can't shimmy the way you shimmy. But it's like, <laughs> no one can. Um, I joined a, uh, a Damon's walking group on Saturday morning. Um, what else did I do there? I started networking right away. I didn't know a soul. So literally, if you asked me to do anything, I did it. It didn't matter what it was. If some in the office asked me, could they go out and open house with me? I took them with me. I don't know how I became a bowling. Huh, bowling. Oh, yeah, I do day bowling on Sunday nights. I'm sorry. So I would go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I did, a it's a little bit of fun. It's a little bit of fun. Everything's gay. It's a little bit of fun. Walking and walking. Well, you know that there's a gay way to bowl. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> you can go in so many directions with each yes. other. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> all the directions make you money. That's right, that's right. They make you money. That's right. <laughs> but it's because it's part of my world. And it was the world that I came in the reason you came to say, I have a chosen thing. It's because it was diverse. I looked at Sarasota. I looked at Naples. We fit the demographic for all of them. But it wasn't diverse. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to live with those people. Mm -hmm. I wanted to live with my people. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was the bottom line. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. So uh, do anything you can do with anybody. Anybody asks you to do anything, do it. I don't care what it is. But that really is what that's awesome. our business. Very nice. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. I guess mine came from having a need. You know, when I got in real estate, it was 1997. And I just happened to go through a divorce. And my wife was in college at the time. And I just had, at the time, my best year in real estate. So you could gather what happened with what the divorce attorneys told me I had to do. <laughs> so I had alimony and I had child support. And it was to the tune of like $12,000 a month. And so in 97. And I was, I was yelling back then, you know, I was in my lower thirties. So, um, yeah, I said, I have to do this. I have to make $15,000 at least a month and live in a friend's basement. You know, that was what I had to do. So then I just got busy and did the math and figured out how, how what I had to do to make that and to be able to live. And it was how many phone calls I had to make every day, how many people I had to reach every day, how many appointments I had to set, how many deals I had to have. And I just got it down to, I have to do one deal a week. Mm -hmm. And that was it from almost day one in real estate. And that became my normal. And then when people came onto my team and I didn't even know about KPA for 20 years, but now that I do know about KPAs and use it for everybody I hire and go through the system, I, I need to know that they have a need. If they've got money coming in from something else, they're usually not the right person for my team. I, mean, I, I need to know that they're going to hustle. They have a reason to hustle. I don't care if it's another reason. You know, it, it's okay. But there, there better be a need or else they're just going to be along for the ride, in my opinion. I like that. Thank you. Very good. Good to Okay, there's 36 people there. They don't have any questions on the Zoom. Well, I told you to hold on. Don't hold on. The chat. Yeah. Having the chat, let's see. There's Erica. Hi, Erica. Erica, we'll see you. Erica, say hi, Erica from New York. She's with us. Okay, so I've been monitoring the chat for you, and thank you so much for having me. Hi, and I hope you guys can hear me. I feel like this the Wi-Fi is a little spotty, but I'm sending you guys. Oh my gosh, I'm on this camera. Um, <laughs> all of a sudden, I saw my big face. I was like, "That's interesting." Um, I'm here from New York, and I, I actually am just I'm getting allergies hearing your story. Julio had no idea about that story, and it's just like it blows me away. And Jack, I knew part of your story. Jody, um, I followed you from afar on social, and like I'm just so inspired by each of you. So my question, oh, I'm getting choked up here, is how do you when you're nowhere near where you guys are, how do you not feel like, hold on, okay. How do you not look at yourself, look at you guys and feel like a little sad because you're not there yet, right? Like comparison is a thief of joy and I get that. But every time I'm hearing people that are doing really well, there's a part of me in all honesty that feels like, why am I not there yet? What can I do? So 
if anyone could offer that to me, because I'm sure at some point each of you had someone else you looked up to. And I'm sure hopefully there's someone else who's ever had this experience. And I've been in the business 13 years and I was doing 100 GCI within my first year full time in, in um, 2009. And then life happened and I'm not there. Actually, I'm over that right now. I'm at like 130, but I want to be much higher that I'm 13 years in the business. So anything that you can offer me and anyone who maybe had a fallout or fell down to like really rise up. Awesome. Good question. Um, I, everyone here up here has a story and a past and what they've gone through. And I think everyone in the room has a hardship that they face. And um, when I started in real estate, I, you, you, you've heard me speak that I started with $350 in my bank account wow. at rock bottom. And um, so for me, I started writing. And if you don't know, I am a big handwritten notes person. And so when you are struggling in life and you're like, how am I going to get through? I started um, making, writing five notes of gratitude a day. So handwritten notes, and it's thanking anyone. And it can be the person at the grocery store. It can be the person that cuts your lawn. It could be the pool guy. And I can tell you, it is overwhelmingly effective in reference to not only does it touch the person who's getting the note, it affects you and you start being grateful for what you currently do have and it changes your life. Um, I have never stopped writing notes. Um, in fact, I have four kids and they were not allowed to play with their gifts until they wrote thank you first. So they're like, uh, write it really quick. Um, but it changes your life. I know my daughter, she was um, in college and they had, you know, the counselor that says, here's the classes you should take. And she wrote a note that said, hey, thank you so much for guiding me in these courses and giving me guidance. I appreciate you so much. And, um, you know, she wrote this. Well, the counselor called me and says, in 25 years, never have I had one child ever thank me for what I do. And so um, in reference to handwritten notes, I never have stopped writing handwritten notes. I write them to my clients. Um, at some points when I do a mass mail out to my clients, I have someone write my handwritten notes for me. <laughs> so when I say that, um, you know, you have to leverage your time as well. I can't write 500 people, you know, that's a full-time job. And I've done it for years for Christmas. I write a personal note, sincerely knowing their family, what they do. And um, it is life-changing. So when you're having a hard day, you should stop, think, and be thankful for what you do have. And it it will change you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Erica, um, I think you need to be just happy and blessed where you're, where you're at right now. You know, you are surrounded by people that love you and, and are going to encourage you through this whole thing. You're doing the right things. I know you're on pivot every morning, taking it all in and learning and implementing doing what you learn from those who are a few steps ahead of you. you. You don't have to go look at the people who are 10 steps ahead of you. Look at the people who are a couple of steps ahead of you and do that this year. And then the next year, the people who are ahead of them a little bit and do it one bit at a, at a time. Don't think you have to be at seventh level when you're at level one or level two. You know, chip away at it. And the ride is beautiful. Okay, and the people you meet along the way, and the people that leave along the way, and the way you get your, your the way you improve with your failures are beautiful. Every step. Okay, that's that's what I want you to take in because when you get to the level where we're at, and we all feel like we 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 can keep going forever in this, you know, the year after or the, the, the day after you hit that point, you start freaking out, going, "Can I do it again? And can I do it bigger? Can I do it better?" And then the market starts to shift and it makes you nervous. It makes you scared. And you have people. When you're up here, you have people. And you have people you worry about. Not just your own family, but you have a team. You have four or five, six, seven families that we worry about, you know? So it exponentially can get more stressful too. My brother's four years older than me. He has a lot more black hair than I do. <laughs> you know? So enjoy every moment of the steps to get there and embrace those. And don't freak out and don't beat yourself up. Love yourself and just know that you're doing the right steps, Erica. Thanks, Peter. Nothing else falls off the top. 
and I want to also thank you for throwing this in over yesterday. Um, <laughs> and this is what the group is about. Everybody on our, at our, at our, I call it our team, our morning team, helps each other. And if you, and I really mean this in the bottom of my heart. If you're not on the calls, you're making a huge mistake. It might take six months for people to recognize who you are, but there's an incredible group of people that will be there if you help. And if you ask for help, all of us that are on the calls will call each other and help each other. Some of these things I need help with something. I mean, I make, I told you the other day, I make five, oh, sorry, I make five calls a day to different agents that are on the call just to touch base to see how they are, simply to do the same thing. Uh, we were at Tulio's uh, party the other night, and um, I didn't know this, but Philip came up to me and, and, and said to me, you know, Jack, I started incorporating what James has taught you. I said, what does James teach you? He said, I'm now calling my former patients to check on them. That's great. Yep. That, so he has an effect. It's a ripple effect. You're calling people to check on people. That's the bottom line. We're here to help on any, on, on, certainly on any level that we can. Very nice. Thanks for sharing. So please, please, please. You know, early birds. And if you don't know what it is, contact one of us. It's in Clubhouse. Early birds talk in real estate at 6.30 in the morning, 7.00. And then I take, I take that break for a half hour to shower and get eat something, eat something. <laughs> Seven thirty, I go on James Shaw show, and he has changed our world. Yes, he yeah, I have yeah, to tell you, yes. he moved us from my first year in the business. I did, I capped my first year. The second year, I did seven million. The third year, I did four, fourteen million. When Vivian and Jake joined me, we went to twenty-one million. Last year, we were thirty-one million. No, 41 million last yes. year. And this year we're at a little over 30 million already. And it's because of the calls, because we are consistent, we are, we, we are committed to ourselves. And Erica, you're there. I know you're on all those calls. Because I, see, I see you on those calls. You can't dish it right? She's from New Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Erica. We love you so much. Give her a round of applause, guys. Thank you so much. I'm just curious, are you handwriting and then mailing them or are you handing them to humans? Uh, mailing. Always mailing them. Mailing. And I actually, there's whatever you're doing in reference to social media, do it well. Um, so when you're sending a card out, make sure it's a card that's not white. So make sure it's pink or pretty or cute. Um, put a sticker on it in the back, like a little seal. It steps it up because that's when you get mail and you see a pink letter or green letter or whatever it is, make sure it, it's stepped up. Um, I always write a personal, something that relates to the family. Um, so it's never just a generic letter. It is really endearing and sincere. And I always say just, you know, I put my heart into everything I do. I give it 110%. And that goes with all um, aspects of not only the handwritten notes, but even when you write someone for Facebook, um, one of the easiest ways to start in social media is it's everyone has to the right of their Facebook someone's birthday. And I know um, when my birthday came, I had um, close to, I think, 2,500 happy birthdays. And it said, happy birthday. That's it. Or it had happy birthday, Jody. So when I write someone happy birthday, write happy birthday, John. I hope this year is your best year ever. I hope your wife, Sylvia, takes great care of you and you get all the golfing in this year. That truly stepped it up from someone saying happy birthday to really someone caring about them and making a difference. So don't do social media a week. Really give of your heart and, and know what you know about that client and, and give a good. I always say every single Facebook or social media post has to have three emojis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Give us a round of applause for Joey. You up there? You have a question for us? She's oh, on. Yes, I do. I do. Thank you so Hi, much. Hi, How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. And so I just wanted to let Erica know that there's a bold law that speaks exactly to where she is. And just don't use others' outsides to compare with your insides. Each and every one of us has a story. And Jack, if you would just tell her what you told me the other day, what we always talk about, what you and I and my grandmother has in common about casting your bread on the water. And that comes back to you after many days, right? So just keep going on and enjoy this journey. You're nothing without your failures. Your failures are going to set you up for massive success. 
So she totally teed me up for the for my question, and that is speaking about our failures being some of our biggest teachers. I'd love to know what some of your big failures have been that you've learned. That's a great one. That was actually you took that question yeah. right off of here. It oh, says, good. here it is. It says, right now, what's the biggest mistake you've made in the business, and what did you do to get through it? Okay, so let's start with two of them. It's one of the first ones is what I didn't join Keller Williams soon. <laughs> <laughs> It took me 20 years until I found this company. And it was actually my coach who incentivized me in a way because she was also a referral friend of mine. And she said, Tulio, you know, I want to keep referring you people, but I really want you to be at Keller Williams if I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And she was sending me two clients a month. So, I, okay. <laughs> I made the switch. But when I made the switch, I wasn't as open as I wish I had been. And you know what it's like coming in to Keller Williams. It's the fire hose. And it's, you got to go to Ignite. You got to go to this. You got to go to this. We go to this. We go to that. And I was like, I, I, can we just shut my door? I just want to work. I just, I, you know, I was already doing well, but I didn't really know where I could be if I, fought, if I had systems. You know, I was just flying by the seat of my pants, doing the Tulio charm, and that was it. But that's not reproducible. And that's when finally, she wasn't my coach at the time, but we were having coffee one day and she said, Tulio, I'm gonna start coaching you. And she had other coaching clients. And she goes, this is what you're gonna pay me and you're gonna pay it. <laughs> and I'm gonna double your business in one year. And it happened. And that was when, and I had already read the MREA and it scared me, you know? And I was like, and, and when I read it, you know, it was like based on stuff written back in whatever, 88 or whatever it was. And uh, yeah, so I didn't have to have 13 people on my team. I didn't have to do 230 deals. You know, I was able to achieve that with 100 and plus 105 or so. But um, it was really not coming. It wasn't just about Kelly Williams. It was about having systems and having people and trusting people and letting go. Yeah. Because when you're on your own, it's really easy to think, well, you can do it. We all know this. And it was making my first hire. Was the, was the jump, and he wasn't cheap. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I could have gone cheap, but I, I went about sixty thousand for for a really really good admin, and then he got his license three months later and became a teammate. <laughs> and we had to hire another admin. So, but those those were the things that you know it was scary for me to make that leap. But once I made the leap, it became easier to then hire the next person, then hire the next person, and then hire the next person, and having the system to do that smart using KPAs and knowing personality assessments and understanding the personality types and who's going to click and who's not going to click with the team. Yeah. So very nice. That's a very nice. Thank you, Joey. Yes. Um, in reference to failing, I think I'm the master of failing. <laughs> it is a nonstop process. I always say I fail forward. Um, and you learn something didn't work, you move on. You cannot let it get you down or beat you up or make you think about quitting. You just have to keep going through it. And um, I can't, it's a never ending process. I think um, I'm, many of you do or don't know, I completely wiped out my entire team last year and started fresh and went get back to the basics. Real estate is really not that hard. Um, but sometimes when you get caught up in things and then you can't let things go. Um, so for me, I am starting fresh now. I'm in hiring. So if anyone in here is <laughs> please let me know. And um, the other thing is, is having fun. I think we get so bogged down in the details and the, and the stress of the job that you lose the fun. And that's one of the things that I never take out of the job and really enjoy. Um, clients can take you on a journey, um, good and bad, but I think if you know how to handle it and move forward past it, I mean, all of us have had difficult, I'd say difficult, is that a good word? <laughs> <laughs> difficult clients, and they can really set the energy and life out of you, and I think that's where you have to say, I am going to keep moving forward. I, in my business, have uh, taken little tiny tasks 
in the business and said, how can we do it better? So no matter what it is, it can be your real estate sign. Look at your sign, say, say is that the best it could be? How can I make it better? If you're uh, ending a call with a client, do you just say bye or do you say, is there anything else I can do to service you? You know what I mean? And I think taking the little tasks, micromanaging it, going down to the basics of every single, we all have checklists and things that we do, but I say, take those checklists and see how you can improve and grow. And then of course I'm saying uh, coaching is critical. Um, I am embarrassed to say um, that <laughs> Chaz, <laughs> Um, has insisted that I get a max coach for the first time. Give a round of applause. <laughs> and so I'm super excited about it. Um, but I've been in coaching. I am nonstop learner. I have listened to every CD. I have listened to every single coaching thing. Um, so I always like to grow, be innovative, try new things. Um, but not they don't all work. You just cannot give up. That's and good. that's why I say surround yourself with people that are going to encourage you, motivate you, and um, get you past those little bumps. That's great, Jody. Thanks for sharing that. Just nice stuff. Okay, we'll have Jack answers, and then I think what we'll do at that point, we'll have you come up and talk to them maybe quickly because you guys have said all the way through. We're like 15 minutes over our normal time. So thank you so much. So Jack, share what your failures were, and how'd you get through it? Gosh. Um... I like your idea. Fail forward, forward. To me, failure was not an option. It's never been an option, ever, 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 no matter what I do. Um, if it didn't work, I figured I'd get a different angle to do it. The one thing I did want to do that is on the, 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 the notes that Jody was talking about. I write 20 notes minimum a week. Minimum. I do, when I go home I take, uh, at night, I write notes. When I get up in the morning, I write notes because I'm taking, taking the things that I didn't do the day before. During the middle of the day, I'll write notes. I mean, I don't know. We go through probably, I don't know. We go through an inordinate amount of notes. The other thing I do, which is a little, we're talking about this, you know, it's about emojis. My grandfather used to write on the back of the envelope, I love you. So on the back of the envelope, I write something nice on the outside of the envelope. To the person that's going to. Now, it might sound a little bit weird, but it's just another touch that they know that you know what's going on, right? So that was my thought. Um, I cannot say enough about Ignite or Bold. I've been through Ignite 14 times. Yeah. My last one was wow. in six years. My last one was with Hudson Warren down in Sarasota. Woo! If you have not taken Hudson Warren, you're making a huge mistake. <laughs> a huge mistake. He is brilliant. He brings everything to the table, he knows exactly what he's doing. Um, inspire. If you're not on James Shaw call with Inspire, it's 20 bucks a month, it's 25 bucks a week, it's an hour every week. Um, what he brings to the table with us and all the discussions he does is absolutely unbelievable. The other thing that I can say that this is the truth is I only surround myself with people in my immediate life that will make me better, not only as a man. Okay, give Jack a round of applause. Yeah. So, yeah. You guys enjoy that? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So what we're going to do before we break, uh, we're going to have the speakers go to the front, but I want to bring up our sponsor, the guy that brought the food for you. Have they even eaten? No. no. You guys got to eat. Okay, let's bring our sponsor. Let's bring Mr. Scott. Uh, uh, Bert. Don't. Just call him Scott. Scott. Let's give Scott a round of applause. He's got some great food for us that he's going to share with us. Some of the great benefits that he shared in last, last call for business cards. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Else we got it all. There you go. Well, guys, thank you very much for having me. I literally will take three minutes of your time. I know you're hungry and uh, people are already starting to pillage behind you. So, hopefully, there's enough for everyone. I brought enough for 70. So, again, hopefully, there's enough. Uh, that being said, uh, very simply speaking, my name is Scott Verdock. I'm president of the B Benefits Group. I've been working with Keller Williams agents now for eight years. I was a Keller Williams agent down in Bonita Springs, and that's how I got wrapped up with you guys. Basically, we're an advisory group for health insurance. I know it's not the you know exciting topic out there, but it's something that everybody needs and struggles with, especially agents. Uh, so a couple of things. One, I'm not just a sales agent. I'm an advisor first. If you have a plan already, I'm not going to talk you out of it, but most people who have plans don't even understand what they have. So please don't hesitate to call us and we will go over it with you. And 90% of the time, I will literally tell you, hold on to what you have. Absolutely. And then we can walk you through some of the particulars just to make sure you do understand what you have. 
Um, we do have plans for agents that are designed for 1099 individuals, for those people with pre-existing conditions and those without. I also have Medicare specialists that work for me. So if you need to speak with somebody that is, you know, if you're over 65 and you, again, don't understand what you have or what your options are, that's what we're here for. Um, the, primarily, the one thing I always like to talk about at this time of year, because we're in June, if anyone is on a marketplace plan and you're getting a subsidy or credit, this is the time of year you want to do an income evaluation. If you basically double what you've already earned, if you're going to be over what you had listed, you have to now pay that back. And unfortunately, due to COVID, for the last two years, they haven't changed the thresholds. This year, they're going to change them dramatically from what we've heard, which means that you're going to end up having to pay a lot more for health insurance and you may have to pay more back. So if that's the case, give me a call. I can walk you through those as well. All right. Um, that being said, um, I do want to congratulate y'all. I've been doing this for eight years and since COVID, this is the largest group I've seen at, at one spot. From Melbourne, Orlando, and Tampa, and Fort Myers, and this is the largest in-person group I've seen yet, so congratulations. Um, that being said, I know that uh, health insurance is important. I will be in the back if you'd like to talk with me in private, uh, but most important, I got you a $50 gift card to racetrack, which should get you out of the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, I'll, I'll reach out to you all and give you my information if you do need to speak with me. So let's see who wins here. Eric Jenkins. Eric Jenkins. Yeah. Is he in the room? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You're interested to win? <laughs> I, don't, I don't make the rules. Yes, yes. Eric gets mad at me. He's right here. Right. No, no. Yes. <laughs> All right. Gwen, uh, Gwen and Doug Campbell. Doug Campbell. A quick note, there are a couple open house Thank opportunities for this weekend. If anybody's interested in doing an open house, please see me. I'll put you in touch with the listing agent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really great with Gwen and yeah. Oh, there's Eric. Eric, you won, but. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. All right. All right. So guys, what we're going to do is we're going to have Jody and uh, Jack, and let's give them a big round of applause. We thank you so much. I love you both. You are so amazing. Just, uh, just so you guys know, Tony and I work together at Keller Williams and, and Partners in Colorado. And